Name? Peter, sir. Susan, sir. I'm Lucy. You have a name too, I trust? Edmund. Sir. Sir. Hello, I'm Jonathan and I played Edmund in the Chronicles of Narnia. Hi, I'm Sophie and I played Lucy in the Chronicles of Narnia. Hi, I'm Richard and I played Peter. Hi, I'm Sophie and I played Susan. Where did you first meet? Well, we first met at the final audition, mm. didn't we? Mm. When um, the director was trying to pair basically a family, because you've got to make us all look like brother and sister. Um, so... There was, there was a series of workshops. Um, we met at the second workshop, I think. There, there was an exercise which we all had to do where we had to uh, tell each other about our families and then remember it, remember what the other person said. So it was basically an exercise to see if we, if we could listen to each other, which is, I think it was quite... I don't even did you remember do that. that? I can't remember it. I, I obviously didn't listen. <laughs> it's on the documentary. <laughs> but they got it down to two families in the end. Um, and that's when we met. And it we was really... Because even though you're quite young, we all knew what was going on. And there was, you know, it was a bunch of about 20 kids, all of us mm. kind of in what was known as the green room. And they kept kind of calling people in and out and in and out. And you kind of knew when you were standing. For the last hour, it was just us going yeah. in again, so yeah. we sort of had a feeling. It's quite a bizarre selection, though. I mean, it's not your sort of bog standard like, family. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> I know. I, I, I think they took a risk on the family, really, because I think the other family they, they had it down to was much more like uh, your sort of typical idea of what the Pevensies would look like. And I think we were oh, all quite totally. unusual for what I people had in their imagination. Yeah. I didn't look anything like Lucy. I didn't, yeah. I didn't look anything like Lucy. If you look at the books and the original drawing, she's mm. quite sort of tall, skinny and long plaits. And I was this short little short dumpling. Brown. <laughs> short brown. With great big puffy face and short hair. And so. I'm, sh I'm the shortest one now, so, yeah, it's all changed. Do people still recognise you? Mm. Yes. Not you. Not me. Most different. Thank God. <laughs> I knew I'd reached a good point in my life when people weren't saying, hmm. They sometimes, if they say, if I, if they say, oh, what do you do? And I say, oh, I'm an actress. They say, oh, what have you done? And I kind of do things. They say, no, I haven't seen that, haven't seen that. But you do look really familiar. And then I say, well, I played Lucy in the line that was in wardrobe. And that's like, yeah, that's it, that's it, oh my God. But you, you I think you haven't, you, obviously you've got older. <laughs> I have got older. What's strange is when you uh, meet children who are about, you know, eight or nine, who weren't even born when we made it, mm. who are obviously watching it on videos or DVDs. I'm at university now, so a lot of the people um, that, that are 21 now, uh, and they were, they were little when they saw it, and they really loved it. So the only feedback I get is really positive, and I was really proud to be a part of it, so um, anything is good as far as I'm concerned, but I always get recognised all the time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> They get recognised occasionally, yes, but as you said, it's such a positive thing, it's mm. such a good thing to be part of. And, mm. and when people come up to you, they're, they're, always, they're always interested and they always love the stories and, and we love them as well. So it's, it's, um, it's good, it's a good thing. I think because they're such magical stories as well, mm. people remember them with such fondness. So mm. it, it was that kind of, because they were on a Sunday afternoon yeah. and mm. you'd sit down with like, you know, your yeah. parents and sit in front of the telly and have tea and yeah. watch it. And I think, because I remember doing it, they did the Box of Delights, I think. Yeah. Like a year or two before mm. we did Lion, the Rich and the Wardrobe, and to me that was, mm. I really had sort of fond memories of that. What was it like working with groundbreaking special effects? God, well, because we got, we got chucked in quite quickly, didn't we, on the old harnesses? We did rehearsals, we actually were taken to a theatre, we didn't really know what quite to expect. We went to a theatre where I think they filmed Peter Pan or something, or I mean... Uh, they were doing the production, show. weren't they, mm. yeah. And they strapped us in and got us to stand on one side of the stage and said, right, run across the other side. So off we went, bum, 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 and we'd take off. Well, the theme when we were all suspended at the same time was in Prince Caspian when we go into Narnia for the second That's time. That's right. And we just, we'd spent a lot of time just up in the air. For I us, think. it was flying on Aslan when we were, we were flying on Aslan at its back. So they'd have to suspend us and then sort of hoist us onto the back of the lion type of thing. I, got, I flew on the back of a, a unicorn or something. If you look at the, I think the, the um, footage, my knees are actually in the wings of the horse because they, just, they, they superimpose the horse and its wings afterwards so the wings are actually flapping on my knees and attached to me instead of the, the horse, it just looks a bit weird. But it's beautiful, I think that's one of the best bits of animation, I think mm. that's lovely that moment. With the wind machine, pretending I can see all these fantastic things, 
Yeah, that's the thing. That's like the ooh ah acting. Like when we were on the back of our slam, mm. ooh ah, ooh. <laughs> when all you can see is actually a blue mat. Mm. But we used to have great fun, like picking up blue things. Remember, we were very young. Picking up blue things and like walking across the screen, and because obviously they disappear, so you could be headless mm. or tummyless or kneeless. And also, me, me and Jonathan had to do uh, sword fighting with things that weren't there mm. because we were fighting with uh, animated creatures. So we had to learn um, sword fighting sequences, basically with, you know, having no impact on anything. What was acting in the snow like? It was really cold. Mm. We had to wear, we had to, well, because <laughs> obviously we were wearing shorts or, or skirts, um, we, we were actually wearing uh, thermal long johns with uh, flesh-coloured tights over them, mm. which took a while to get used to. These are really lovely galoshes, they were. <laughs> mm. But, I mean, we did, a lot of the snow, we did snowing scenes were in Scotland and yes you would have snow some of the time but a lot of the time they had to use fake snow which is basically like lux isn't it put foam. into a machine and foamed and the thing about that is it looks great if you're doing a shot when you're not walking in it but if you actually look at some of the Narnia <laughs> scenes and look at our feet you might see that we've got like little bits of soap the actors who played uh, Mr and Mrs Beaver, Leslie Nicholl and Carrie Shale uh, particularly found it very hard uh, walking in the snow so you had to have, do you remember there's two members of crew on standby who we called the beaver retrievers that's who would right. stop them you know, or they would catch them every time they fell I think that's on the outtakes mm. as well actually our first ever, On our first ever day of filming was when you see us coming out of the wardrobe for the first time as the four of us together and that was actually the first day of filming and uh, we were wearing tights, the skin coloured tights and we had the little charcoal um, the tea bags tea bag tea bags shake and they heat up so we had those all stuffed down everywhere all our into boots, the shoes everywhere everywhere did you have many fans at the time yes <laughs> we had fans were we had kind of a mixture of fans didn't we i remember when it first came on we all got lots of bibles sent to us because obviously there is a religious sort of undertone to it and it's you know very similar to the, the story of jesus christ and but it was um it was a bit freaky when you're sort of 13 getting a Bible sent through with a long sort of obviously someone had taken the time to write the letter but mm. I, I much mm. preferred the ones that were saying I really liked you in mm. the line <laughs> <laughs> the I got lots of letters from America mm. I got quite a few letters from mm. America and I got lots of red roses mm. yes. so. <laughs> they were yes. dead by the time I got them actually because they sent them to the BBC by the time they got home uh, very good. do you remember when they um, uh, they reviewed it on points of view the, the, the British TV programme, basically, that, that people write in and talk about their comments of, of, of current TV programmes. And somebody wrote in and said, Popping why out. can't the BBC get a real child to play the part of Peter <laughs> instead, of the, instead of the overgrown, pompous, yuppie dwarf? <laughs> Well, they said, but yeah, but they sent one about me saying about me popping out of my cardigan, and I know I was, I was chubby. But come on. What was it like working with Aslan? Aslan, Aslan. They spent a lot of, mo of money on, on creating this 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 lion, this animatronics lion. So we, the first time we saw him was in the rehearsal rooms at North Acton, mm. and he had his head, but his body, body head, yeah, yeah mm. his body wasn't quite finished. But it, 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 suddenly you had a real lion in the room, and it, it was it, it was. It was really magical. Just the hair yeah. on his face, every last detail. His eyes were very expressive, mm. weren't they? Aslan was suddenly there. How did filming the Chronicles of Narnia affect your careers? <laughs> well, I, I, I wanted to be an actor, you know, when I grew up at the time. So, Lion Witch and the Wardrobe opened a lot of doors for me. So it was it was great. It created a lot of opportunities, and I wanted to do West End musicals and. Um, you and, did. and I did, and, and some more TV, and went to America for a bit. So it, it, it was a great sort of, uh, you know, a good start, really. Mm. I, I taught ballroom dancing um, when I went to, I followed my sort of dancing routes when I went over to Australia. Um, whilst I was there, I did a bit of acting, sort of extra work in home and away, <laughs> just for the fun of it. And, um, so, and then taught ballroom dancing and went to Vegas and competed in Vegas, which was fun. And then since then I've come back and I've sort of regressed because I'm uh, now studying. So I'm now at university. So, but you've been to university. I just, just finished a degree. I finished Nani and did a bit of TV work and then sort of decided I'd had enough. And it was rather like having a career early on and, and I didn't really know what to do. So I spent several years sort of just traveling and wandering around, not really having a direction. And then a few years ago I went to university, read a degree, and now I'm restoring pictures, enjoying it. It's good.
gave me the bug, unfortunately, <laughs> much to my parents' dismay. Um, they sent me back to school to do my GCSEs and my A-levels. Um, they said that if I wanted to do it, um, I'd have to apply to drama colleges, go and get a, a training, and if I got in, I could go and do that, and if not, I'd have to go to university. Ha 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 to them, I got in. <laughs> so they had to support me for another three years. Um, so I went and did that, got an agent, and um, I do bits and pieces. Yeah, carried on acting. Carried on acting. When I'm not acting, I am. Um, I nanny and look after children, which is great, and I also run like little musical drama schooly things for kids and things like that so I'm still out there and I still love acting. Mm -hmm.